the royal family is preparing for their yearly trip to Scotland, where they enjoy a simple and traditional holiday. But there is a question that has been hanging over them for five years, will Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, join them? Hello and a very warm welcome to British Royal Daily Updates YouTube channel. The Daily Mail's royal editor Rebecca English reported that the couple has an open invitation to spend some time with his family at Balmoral, which has not been withdrawn. However, it is very unlikely that Harry and Meghan will accept and show up with their children and matching Burberry kilts. But for those who hope for a reconciliation, there is a glimmer of hope. A source close to the royal family told English that the open invitation is a positive sign and that it could lead to a future restoration of personal relationships. A few months ago, the idea of Harry and Meghan visiting Scotland would have been laughable, but things have changed recently, so it is worth wondering, could or would they ever take Charles up on a Balmoral stay? If there was ever a chance for a royal peace treaty, the King's private Scottish estate would be a good place for a meeting. Charles and Harry would be away from the Buckingham Palace courtiers, some of whom Harry criticised in spare. They would also have 50,000 acres to wander, no press around, unless a male reporter got lost while fishing, and more time for conversations, and conversations that don't have to fit between official engagements. Harry and Meghan have never stayed with his family at Balmoral during their usual summer break, so it might also be a neutralist place with no bad memories. The timing could also be favourable for this option. The last three months have not been kind to the Duke and Duchess. In May, Harry attended the coronation alone and looked like a lonely and unhappy figure who needed some comfort and food. The same month, the couple went to New York for what should have been an easy publicity stunt with the Duchess receiving an award from the Miss Awards. Meghan's feminist achievements, please, no snickering in the back, were overshadowed by the uproar that ensued when they claimed they had been in a near-fatal car chase with the malicious media. To quote the late Queen, it soon became clear that memories differed, with the New York Police Department and the city's mayor giving much less dramatic versions of what happened. All this was just a preamble for what was to come, which was their US career going downhill. Today, their $29.7 million, 20 million US dollars, Spotify deal is done and dusted, their Netflix contract is unlikely to be renewed and they have been called fucking scammers with Meghan labeled as not a great talent. In early June, Harry was back in London to testify in his war against the Mirror Group newspapers over alleged phone hacking, an experience that left him appearing to choke back tears. Meanwhile, the Sussexes have found themselves increasingly targeted or at least caught by the paparazzi with a steady stream of new shots of them out and about in Montecito. Lastly, there has been the drip, drip, drip of speculation about the state of their marriage. A source told The Sun recently. There is a bit of a feeling Harry is spiraling out of control and all is not well. It's at this point that hiding away in a small bothy, tiny Scottish cottage, somewhere on the vast Balmoral estate might not look like the worst idea, even if it came with the prospect of being forced into some lengthy moorland march by Auntie Anne. Obviously, there has been no sort of progress or healing of wounds this year in the wake of Harry's memoir. The king is not believed to have read his son's epic of hurt feelings, with one friend of his majesty telling the mail, why would he read something that he knows is going to be so hurtful? However, by the same token, all indicators point to the Duke and Duchess moving on from their years-long venting of emotions whenever they were near recording devices. The main storm would seem to have passed. At the same time, Harry's attempts at getting some sort of concession or an apology out of his father and brother have met with total stubborn resistance. He might have sold a Guinness world record-breaking number of books and have finally figured out how to use a semicolon, but his campaign to hold the firm accountable looks like it has largely failed. He landed a few punches, but there was not a single knockout. If this has all been fruitless, then could we see a change in strategy? some sort of softening or outreach from either or both sides. At some point, even if for nothing but practical reasons, some sort of reconciliation or tentative reopening of lines of communication surely has to happen. English has also reported that relations between father and son are still not good, although the family feel encouraged by claims that Harry and Meghan are now determined to focus on the future rather than family recriminations. Slivers of Hope 
encouraging development. Just imagine what all that fresh air plus those charred Tesco sausages eaten by a lot could achieve. And if they can pull this off, then next year they should invite the Israelis and the Palestinians. Remember to subscribe to British Royal Daily Updates YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell, this way you will be notified when we drop a video, stay safe.